You are listening to Something Rather Than Nothing. Creator and host, Ken Vellante. Editor and producer, Peter Bauer. This is Ken Vellante with the Something Rather Than Nothing podcast. And for this episode, uh, very pleased to welcome uh, Joelle Jones. Um, and uh, she's just a, really an artist uh, that, that I've enjoyed uh, for some time. And uh, we're just lucky to have a chat with her and learn about um, her art, uh, her career, her thoughts on art itself and art as it stands right now. Uh, Joelle Jones, welcome to Something Rather Than Nothing. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, it, like I said, it's a great pleasure. Um, Joelle, uh, what were you like when you were younger? I mean, did you did you work in, uh, did you do a lot of art, sketching, music? Were you an artist when you were younger? Yeah, most definitely. I don't think I did much else. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was a pretty solitary kid, uh, and I preferred to be by myself and draw most of the time, not knowing that I'd be doing that the rest of my life and I should have been outside playing. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's always just been uh, drawing, basically. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the question. Should you have been outside playing? You've done well with the art. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've always, so you've always done it. Was it was it something in the environment that you were in, where there were folks around you that did it, or was it something that felt a little bit more innate as far as where your interests were? Um, do you know, I, I think it was just because I was personality-wise pretty solitary. It it just seemed to fit really well. Uh, and so I, I kept doing it uh, obsessively. I don't remember a time where I didn't. Uh, and then about eight years old, I discovered comic books and really made up my mind of like, no, this is this is what I want. Uh, this is amazing, the storytelling. So I'm going to go after this. And so I went all in. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to, uh, and, and thank you for that. I wanted to chat with you about, um, and, and give you the opportunity to speak about uh, some of the characters um, you've worked on, and uh, some, you know, very prominent characters within the the comics universe, and also some of your own uh, creations. And uh, just, for, and this is for the listeners. Just, um, uh, Joelle has done. Um, you know, she's worked on uh, Batman, Catwoman. Uh, she's won an award for Lady Killer, which was a, a, a limited series um, in two volumes, uh, as well as Helheim. I love Helheim, by the way. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, just love Helheim. Um, uh, just that the 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 aesthetic there and the the. the I love that book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and so uh, I, I really loved your your creations. I was wondering if you could start, Joelle, by just giving the listeners a little bit of background about, uh, you know, what you've gotten some attention for and just the wild uh, and, and wonderful creation of Lady Killer. Can you give a little bit of background how that came about and uh, some of the attention around Lady Killer? Sure. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's all been kind of a. A surprise to me um but basically i came up with lady killer i was in sort of a a, a, a work funk uh, i wasn't getting the kind of jobs that i really wanted to do um i wasn't getting the books or the genres that i was really interested in because i hadn't done it before i had to kind of create a job so that i could show people what i was interested in what i wanted to do um, and I just sort of daydreamed and, and kind of played with it for the longest time. And that eventually I pitched it. Uh, and then one company told me, they're like, oh, we don't know who this is, who the audience for is for this. We don't think that this would do well. So then I went to another one and, and they ended up picking it up in exchange for me doing another project. It's sort of like a uh, quid pro quo sure. situation. And uh, so I did the first one, not thinking anybody would read it. Um, so I just went in with the intention of um, entertaining myself. And then it sold out uh, like two or three printings and people spoke really well of it. And 
I, I was, I'm, I still am shocked by the reception of, you know, people enjoying it. Yeah. And, you know, the, and, and I think that, you know, for, for the listeners, uh, with, with lady killer, um, you know, uh, attractive, uh, female, uh, primary character, housewife, uh, but also an assassin. Um, <laughs> so it's like, the uh, you know I always think in the sense of this, and let me know what what you think, Joel. Uh, just you know um, that kind of like American fascination with like the underbelly, right? With the right. kind of appearances being one thing, and then you know kind of like underneath this kind of you know violence or bizarre type of um, uh, ag- activity. Um, did you did you feel that creation was helping you work out just like kind of um, some of those like contradictions or I I guess what I'm saying is hearing that there might not be an audience for that or what you were hearing initially, you know, it doesn't seem to be the most inviting subject matter. But yet when you see things of this nature, they tend to do well. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, it, it. you know, I think it speaks to a lot of people in terms of it's sort of a it's not black or white she's not a superhero she's not a good person and yet you're compelled to watch what she does and you sort of root for her and i i like contradictions in people so where she wants everything to be the perfect um 1950s daydream pepsi ad she can't live up to that and you know if somebody's got a darkness like that inside of them it's going to come out no matter what you can't fight it. Uh, you know, you are who you are. And uh, she happens to just be a, a terrible person. But I, I, I enjoy those contradictions. I like visually the juxtaposition of the blood and gore with a perfectly tailored suit and crinoline. I, I really enjoy it. Well, you 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 capture it perfectly when you are, and I'm not trying to overstate it or just you know throw that out there. But there's some way you capture like kind of that gloss in that color that exists there, and then the at the bottom of the mop is you know a bucket of blood, right? Yeah, and, um, <laughs> you, you're you're able to do that, and it's 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 uh, quite the pleasure. Now you've done you know maybe some more of the standard you know large publisher. Um, you know, uh, superheroes as well. Do you have, do you have one that you just feel like you were made to, uh, to draw a superhero? I mean, I, I adore drawing Catwoman. Uh, I, I, I've always been drawn to her. She's always been one of my favorites. She's probably my favorite at DC for sure. Um, and so I got to do that, uh, for quite a few issues. And now I'm kind of looking at, you know, who's the next one going to be and, you know, which one is going to be exciting now that I did the one I always wanted to do. Yeah, I, I, and I, that that was wonderful. I also enjoyed your work on um, with Supergirl, the limited series. Um, uh, the I, I think it's being super, Supergirl being super. Yeah, oh, yeah, with Mariko. Yeah, she yeah. that story was so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that 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 was that was most most enjoyable. Um, and of course, you're based in, in in Portland. One of the things I'm originally from the East Coast and lived in the Midwest. When I got out to Oregon and particularly to Portland, I was just amazed because it felt like such a comic book epicenter. And I didn't know that <laughs> about it before getting here. Um, oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. So it's been just a it, it's been enjoyable. I've been here for about a decade, but. Um, such a fertile ground for creativity, first of all, but also for um, uh, for comics. Um, one of the questions, uh, the big one, of the big questions I wanted to ask you, Joel, is what is, in your opinion, what is art? Uh, you know, I had to answer this question so many times because I went to art school. Uh, I was a fine arts painter. Uh, And I don't remember any of my answers, and I'm pretty sure I give different ones every time. Uh, And my opinion is probably different. I mean, art, it's subjective, I guess. What's art to me is an art to the same person or to a different person. Um, It's tricky. I'm trying to remember 
all my art school bullshit. One, 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 of, <laughs> one of your answers. I answer this question differently depending upon what mood I'm in, and sometimes mm -hmm. with, with 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 my audience. And when you, when you uh, uh, point of personal privilege privilege here, when you were you know uh, within maybe of a fine arts setting and uh, an art school and, and such. Um, is you were asked this question around that time? Was this a question that maybe art students kicked around or just thought that they should be able to have an answer for? Do you know what is funny? Is uh, day one, uh, like the introduction course, they sat us all down in a hall and they put it on a whiteboard and they said, what is art? You need to answer this, not now, but eventually, like when you graduate, you can answer this question. And it was something posed to us pretty much in every class all over the place all the time. Um, but I, I dropped out before I graduated. So maybe I don't know what art is. Maybe you would have, <laughs> maybe, maybe that would have been given to you with the, uh, with the diploma, right? It would have been right? the, the answer and the diploma. I would have the answer. I, you know, I, I think in terms of art, I think just speaking for me and not for other people, it's something that, um, can emotionally draw me in um, and sort of tap into a part of myself or, you know, a softer way of thinking. It's just opening me up to different ideas, different ways of looking at things, sort of cutting in through the day-to-day -day muck and uh, sort of challenging the way you think or comforting you know, it's. I think it's just if it strikes an emotion, I consider yeah. that to be successful art. Um, there's nothing worse than just, you know, blah. <laughs> it's nice, and then you walk off, yeah. or you have no opinion whatsoever. That's death. Uh, so yeah, I think you know, something for me as a visual artist, if I can tell a story that can get emotions out of you, or we can kind of come to a, the same table as, as far as like, oh, you understand me and, you know, I understand you and, and I'm going to reach you through this medium. Yeah. Base. Yeah. I mean, it's a treat. It's tricky because it's different for everybody, I suppose. Yeah. And I, I think uh, in the terms of some of the things you talked about or mentioned in there, I, I like is, um, you know, the kind of concept of language of how do you communicate or like the heart or the emotion, right. To, to, mm -hmm. To, to cause something, to cause an effect upon uh, upon the viewer. Does uh, another follow-up question to you know art, you know, you know, with the with a big A, is there a different role right now for artists? And I speak this, you know, there's 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 issues that have come to the fore in the new decade. Um, you know, obviously the pandemic, racial injustice, um, environmental issues, uh, and, and, and a host of other issues that have been around for a while, but seem to be more prominent, you know, at present right now. Um, do you think art has a different role in this context right now? Yeah, I mean, I think it can, I think it can definitely provide a, a different role than what we've previously seen. Uh, or experienced with art. Um, it's hard to tell when you're in the thick of things. Uh, I think, you know, we can only really assess that when we look back and see how art affected the pandemic or, you know, um, the sort of uh, media that people are putting out during this time. Uh, I'm going to be, I'm very interested to find, like, to look back and see what we were thinking, what we were going through, and what was produced during that time. Because um, that's going to stay, right? The the sourdough bread that you learned how to make is going to be a distant memory. But when you take in a piece of, of film or art, you'll remember that as being tied to that time. And and I'm really interested to see, you know, how, we, how we're going to see it. Yeah, it it is it's had such an, an impact. I found that with the 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 recent uh, fires and ongoing fires here in the Pacific Northwest, that a couple paintings I paint in a couple in a row. I was just like looking for like light blue colors of like seeing anything that was like <laughs> just cooling or softer or less, you know, 
violent, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, so. I think, you know, comfort food in art is, is viable. Is, you know, sometimes you don't want to be challenged. Sometimes you just want to be comforted. And I think right now that's where I'm going. Of I want something a little comforting. and uh, I don't really want to be challenged. I'm stressed out enough. You know, so yeah, uh, yeah. It's 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 interesting. I, I especially for film, I think that'll be fascinating to find out like what worked, what didn't. Uh, and in terms of comic books, you know, what's going to hit? What's what are people going to not enjoy? Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of like other crises and what we consumed because I think after 9/11, it was a lot of garbage movies <laughs> but it like felt distraction, good like distraction right mm -hmm. yeah and it, it felt good it felt like uh this is comforting this is familiar and we like this and i i know a lot of artists that especially during the beginning of the pandemic none of us could really work we were just sort of kind of stunned and and the idea of going into our heads and and Working was really difficult, I think, for a lot of people, especially writing stories. Uh, I think at the time I was writing, maybe I was writing a Catwoman, and it became really difficult for me to focus because she was going through a crisis, but so was I, and I didn't have time for her. So. <laughs> right, right. Um and, and and yeah, obviously those impacts. I've talked to artists, you know, particularly with with the pandemic and the the kind of strange pressures. I would say, right, where it's like, I need to use my time to do this now, or you know, fuck all this art stuff. Like I'm going <laughs> bad, yeah, you know. And um, I think everybody had to grapple with it in it in their in their own way and continue to, of course. Um, yeah. But uh, it's definitely been a, an, an interesting question I've asked over time because it, you know, it also matters when you ask it, right? As far as how yeah. are you doing, um, you know, whether it's health wise or just the environment that's there. Um, I got another big, well, another big question or two. One one big question I ask is, um, who or what made you who you are? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, well, I mean, I have to give credit to my parents, I suppose. <laughs> but in terms of where I ended up, I mean, I, it, it was a lot of little help along the way. Um, but I think that my personality is just really suited to this job. <laughs> I don't think I'm much good for anything else. Uh, I used to be a bartender and I could pretend to be that for a while, but, you know, I think the idea that I like the isolation, I like playing in my head. I like daydreaming. This sort of really fits right into this job. Um, and everybody along the way exposed me to art that I wouldn't have found on my own, um, different books, different types of art, different films. Um, it, it all sort of informs my point of view uh, and lets me sit down, daydream, and, and, and put out a page uh, of a comic book. And, I mean, I've, I've got friends. I, I, I read like crazy, and I've got uh, some friends, and we just exchange books, and we'll go through about like three books a week, uh, you know, just – devouring them and and i need those people to show me things that i wouldn't you know i guess back to the comfort thing of not i'm not being exposed to that so um yeah that's invaluable the challenge from other people yeah that's a good kind of in intellectual climate and artistic and creative climate is that a like a kind of just in general that's like a small uh, community for you that's probably helped you you know, helped you from, yeah. from the day, I'd imagine, right? Yeah, well, and uh, being in Portland and being around other comic book artists uh, can be really comforting. It can also be really annoying, but <laughs> it can be comforting in, in, in terms of I get to complain in shorthand about my job to those people. And then we share, you know, 
tools of the trade and uh, exchange ideas. And, you know, comic books is, is they're very, uh, it's not that competitive that I can see, but people really raise each other up and they're all rooting for each other to succeed because we're all really distinctly different. Uh, so, yeah, it's been invaluable to be in Portland. I moved from Idaho. I think it 2003 and uh, just being around artistic people and a community was such a difference. I'm not trying to slag off Idaho or anything, but I didn't really get any sort of artistic community there. Uh, and the people that were artistic took off. Uh, well, probably yeah. to Portland. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think you'd have, you know, uh, you know, uh, just even as far as the scale of it, I mean, Boise is pretty cool, but it's small, right? So, it's, yeah, you know, in comparison to, and and I'm I'm glad that um, you know the environment that you have there for Portland. It's one that I've been particularly sensitive to, and one that has helped me beyond belief as far as expressing, you know, the art that's that's inside of me. So I I I, I, I adore Portland for that reason because it's it's. It's really um, it's really helped me along. And um, uh, so what, uh, a couple more questions, Joelle. Um, one I had and this is just kind of like a step back and another step back, like what is art type of question. But um, did you ever step back and say or wonder what the purpose exactly is of why you're creating, like what you're trying to do with your creation all the time? <laughs> all the time I'll tell us. Yeah. uh usually it's late night after i've put in like a, a 13 hour day <laughs> it's like what am i even doing with my life this is so ridiculous you know what purpose does any of this serve uh and i think that artists can get down on themselves or or get stuck in that cycle of what is the point because we don't get instant gratification like a stage actor would we don't get any applause we don't get any recognition and the art won't come out for months until after you finished it. So we don't really get any sort of feedback. It just goes to your editor and off to the printers. So it can, it can get, you know, the loneliness of it, I think can make you really question like, what is the point? Um, but you know, every now and then somebody will bring up something that, uh, that they saw in my art that I completely forgot that I drew and they'll say, Oh, I loved it when you drew this. And it's always a real surprise and people that were touched by it or, or, you know, just got a good giggle out of it one day. Uh, yeah. And the fact that there's still people that read it, you know, not that I'm a fan of comic book conventions, uh, cause I'm really shy, but, uh, seeing all those people, and realizing that people actually read comic books uh, instead of just be uh, makes me keep going for sure. Yeah. Well, and one of the things, too, I mean, just to speak clearly is I know that tends to be a doubt amongst artists, but um, uh, everything you've created that I've come in contact with is completely received in a great addition to the world. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if, you're, if you're ever in doubt, just say, I don't know, there's that podcast guy. In All there. right, crisis averted so. for the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, big, big question before we're going to ask you to kind of just share, if, you know, how to come in contact with your art. But uh, title of the podcast, why is there something rather than nothing, Joelle? Um, I have something rather than nothing. Uh, I don't know. I'm a nihilist. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Lady killer is you. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> um, so, um, Joelle, uh, what, what's the best way for, um, uh, for the listeners and, and, and fans, et cetera, to kind of come in contact with your work, whether it's, you know, where to find it, where to find you as is appropriate. Um, where, where do, where do folks go to find Joelle Jones and, in, and in, in encounter your art? I am on social media in a very limited capacity. I'm very lazy with it. 
but I post art on Instagram the most, and it's just, uh, I think, Joelle underscore Jones. And uh, then I have a website. It's just Joelle Jones. And that's usually where I post stuff. I've got some new stuff coming up with DC that'll be announced sometime soon, I think. And then, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, that's, you know, that's, well, that's great to hear. And it's easy as could be, right? So website and, uh, and, and, and Instagram, and it's great to hear that, um, uh, you know, maybe an upcoming announcement with, with your work. Like I said, um, I know when I conveyed to some folks I know in comics and in comic fans, um, that you were going to be on the podcast, um, they, they were just so excited, um, and I wanted Aww. to thank you for that because, for me, it's the it's, it's the same thing. Like I said, um, your your art, your artwork, your ideas are very noticeable, and um, it's it's really great art to enjoy. So I just wanted to thank you so much um, in your busy schedule for taking some time and uh, joining something rather than nothing. Yeah, thanks for having me and the wonderful compliments that'll get me through the day. <laughs> there we go. Hey, you got a you know a few more hours. They'll they'll. Get <laughs> That's <day>. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Joel, and uh, you you have a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks. You too. All right. Bye bye. Bye. You are listening to something rather than nothing. <laughs>